All right, so congratulations. You have now completed the introductory section of this course and are ready to move on to bigger and better things. So this section is all about the level editor. So we're gonna learn a lot of cool stuff in this section like how to move around in a level in the editor, how to put stuff in a level, and how to position it and rotate it just how we want. We're gonna learn how to change the size of objects in our level. We're going to learn how to visualize our levels in different ways, such as without light or without color or as a wireframe and so on. We're going to learn how to store and organize the content that our levels use, and a lot of other very useful things. So we're gonna get down in it, we're gonna get in the nitty gritty, and by the end of this section, you will have mastered the fundamentals of the level editor and have a very solid foundation for continuing forward into the next section. All right, so let's do this. So in this lecture, I'm going to give you a basic overview of the, le of the level editor without going into too much detail. And even before that, I want to spend a few moments discussing some terminology which can be confusing. So first off, the Unreal Engine versus the Unreal Editor. The Unreal Engine is an application that is used to run games. It's a program that has algorithms for determining how objects are rendered frame by frame, how lighting should affect them, and so on. The Unreal Editor is an application for creating games that can run on the Unreal Engine. So that's what we're learning in this course, how to create games with the Unreal Editor that can be played using the Unreal Engine. When we hit the play button here to play our games, the Unreal Editor is using the Unreal Engine to run the game. So to summarize, the Unreal Editor is used for creating games while the Unreal Engine is used for running those games. Okay, secondly, the Unreal Editor versus the Level Editor. So the Unreal Editor has several sub-editors within it, and one of those sub-editors is the Level Editor. What can be confusing about this, however, is that the Level Editor essentially acts as the home screen for the Unreal Editor. So the main window of the Unreal Editor is the Level Editor itself. All of the other sub-editors will open in their own separate windows. So for example, if I double-click on a material, it will open the Material Editor in a separate window. All right, so now I'm going to go over the names of each of the panels in the level editor, and then, it will, then I will give a brief overview of their functions. So first off, this large area in the middle is the viewport. The thin strip above that is the toolbar. At the bottom of the screen, hidden within the content drawer, is the content browser. On the right side of the screen is the world outliner at the top, and below that, the details panel. Keep in mind that these panels can be moved and resized, and also that this is just the default layout of the current release and could change in future releases. So let's go through them again. We have the viewport, toolbar, content browser, world outliner, and details. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a brief overview of what each panel of the level editor is for so that you can start to feel more comfortable with the interface. The viewport is used to give you a visual representation of your game. You will see a representation of the environment you create along with characters and objects the players will see in the game. You will also be able to see certain objects in the viewport that won't be visible when playing the game, such as cameras, event triggers, and invisible barriers. You can also manipulate objects directly through the viewport. The toolbar is a strip of, is a strip of buttons meant to give you quick access to common and or important functions, such as saving, changing the editor mode, or playing your game. The content browser is for storing and organizing content that you can add to your game. This includes content such as meshes, materials, music, sound effects, visual effects, and more. Some types of content can be created directly within the Unreal Editor, but you can also create content outside of the Unreal Editor and then import it in. For example, you could create a table using third-party 3D modeling software and then use the content browser to import the table into your project. There is also a lot of already made content available on the internet for free or for a price that you can download and then import into the content browser. The world outliner is used to list and group the objects in your level in a way that makes them easy to find when you want to select and edit them. The details panel allows you to view and edit the details of whatever object is currently selected, such as the object's size and location. So I'm going to go ahead and run through these one more time, but a little quicker this time. Viewport, used to give you a visual representation of your level. Toolbar, a strip of buttons meant to give you quick access to common and or important functions. Content Browser, 
used for storing and organizing content that you can add to your game. World Outliner, used to organize the actors in your level into a list that makes them easier to find. Details, allows you to view and edit the details of whatever object is currently selected. Okay, the last thing I'm going to discuss in this lecture is customization of the interface. So the Unreal Editor gives you a great deal of control over how the interface looks. One thing you can do is resize the individual panels. To do this, simply click on the edge between two panels and drag, and you can make them any size you wish. You also have the option to move panels around. If you click on the tab of the panel and drag, you can drag it to wherever you want on the screen. For example, I could drag the world outliner to the left of the viewport if I wanted, or anywhere on the screen I wish. You can also choose which panels are open at any given time. To close a panel, simply click on the X on the right side of the Panels tab. To open a panel, go to the menu bar and under Window, select the panel you wish to open. Alright, and for panels that are on the side of the screen, you can choose to collapse them to the sidebar. To do this, simply right click on the panel and select Move to Sidebar. This will give you more room to work with in the viewport. Once the panels are collapsed, you can click on the button in the sidebar to expand and collapse them. And then if you, want to, if you want them permanently docked again, you can right click and select Restore Tab. Finally, you can choose to show or hide the tabs of each panel. To hide the tab, right click on it, choose Collapse Tab Well, and then bam, the tab will hide better than a banana at a Donkey Kong family reunion. To show the tab, click on the blue triangle in the upper left corner of the panel. So you may want to have all the tabs showing while you are still learning the names of the panels, and then once you have them memorized, close the tabs in order to have a little bit more screen room to work with. But it's completely up to you. Alright, and then you have the option to save and load these custom layouts that you create. For example, if I go up to the menu and select Window, then go down to Save Layout, I can select Save Layout As, and then save this layout for, for future use. So I'm going to name it My Custom Layout. Okay, and now I'm going to go back up to the window menu, and this time I'm going to go to Load Layout, and I'm going to select Default Editor Layout, which will reset the layout back to its default. Okay, so if you're ever messing around with the layout, and you just want to get it back to its original form, that's how you do it. Alright, so now that I've saved it, I can load up my custom layout anytime I want. I just need to go back up to Window, Load Layout, and then click on it in the User Layout section. Alright, so you may have noticed that in addition to save and load options, there are also export and import options for layouts. Just imports, no exports? He's an importer-exporter, okay? These are useful for transferring layouts between machines. Export layout allows you to save the layout to any directory on your computer, and it won't show up in your user layouts. So you could then transfer it to another machine where you would use import layout to import it into your project. All right, and then finally, the Window Remove Layout menu gives you the option to delete your user layouts, either individually or all at once by selecting Remove All User Layouts. All right, so that will conclude the lecture on the introduction to the Level Editor.